We are on. Welcome to race number seven of 29 here in the 1991 throwbacks. And so far, we have had an incredible back and forth season. As you can see, Ricky Rudd currently leads the points. He won last week at Bristol in a, a very convincing fashion, to say the least. He got the pull. He ended up pulling away to win. Alan Kowicki right behind him with back-to-back -back victories earlier in the season. And they were in typical Kowicki fashion. He just came out of nowhere, ended up stealing the victory in both of them. Mark Martin, Davey Ellison, Ernie Irvin have had success so far in this season as well. As you can see, all those drivers, five top five so far. Uh, and very interesting note, Rusty Wallace and Ken Schrader are the two drivers to have led the most laps so far in this season. However, they have struggled to finish consistently, as you can see a DNF on both of those columns. Now it's time to go to the borough, North Wilkesboro Speedway here in North Carolina. And this is always known to be a very difficult race at a very difficult racetrack. There's typically a lot of wrecks, a lot of cautions, and few surviving to the end. And it's always who can survive to the end in this race. As far as qualifying, Rusty Wallace once again on the pole, this time with an average speed of 116.987 miles per hour, which is a very fast time here for North Wilkesboro Speedway. He's doing a very good job there. Yeah, that was just a great job there by Rusty Wallace. Once again, putting down a fant fantastic time. So our top 10 starting, the starting lineup for the top 10 is going to be as this. Rusty Wallace on the pole. Mark Martin in second place. Your points leader, Ricky Rudd, will roll off in the third position. Jeff Bodine will roll off fourth. Davey Ellison will be in fifth. We have Daryl Waltrip rolling off in sixth. Brett Bodine in the number 75 continues to do very well in qualifying. He'll roll off in the seventh position. Bill Elliott will be in eighth. Alan Kowicki is in ninth. And Tim Richmond is going to roll off in the 10th position. You can see Sterling Marlin, Ernie Irvin, and Dale Earnhardt all further back here. Here's the command for today's race. Engines have fired here from North Wilkesboro. The cars are rolling off at this five-eighths of a mile facility. Everyone loves this track because the fans could be so close to the racetrack. And it's so, so important. You can see just how close to the racetrack the fans can be right up against the fence here. The cars are coming up off of turn number four. They come to the line. The green flag is out. And the first Union 400 has began. Has begun, rather. English is not my forte today. Rusty Wallace, he gets off to a very quick start. Ricky Rudd will roll into the second position. Davey Allison trying to get third away from Mark Martin. It looks like Ricky Rudd's going to try to go for the lead off of turn four. Does not look like he's going to be successful in his venture. You can see the whole pack flying by here. Uh, first lap is clean so far, so good. Ricky Rudd trying to run down Rusty Wallace right now. Davey Allison free for the third position. Daryl Waltrip's gotten into fourth, and it looks like Brett Bodine's trying to challenge for the fifth position here. It looks like he's going to get that. Lap number two now in the books. And here comes Alan Kowicki trying to get underneath Mark Martin, and now we can definitely see an incident has happened here on the back straightaway. Kowicki trying to get around Mark Martin here as they come to... And it does not look like they threw a yellow flag out for whatever that whatever happened there. Obviously, a car spun into the pit road. No reason to bring out the yellow flag. Kowicki really trying to work on Brett Bodine here. Trying to find a way around him. Looks like he got him there. So, Alan Kowicki will move into the fifth position. And you can also see Davey Allison's trying to find a way around Ricky Rudd. So far, hasn't been working for him. Tim Richmond did not exactly have a very good starting position. He's trying to work his way up. Right now, he's in the 11th position. He's getting worked on by Neil Bonnet here. 
The bonnet will drive down underneath. And bonnet's, I want to say, infamous 1985 season. He only had one win that year and was actually the points leader for a large majority of the year before completely falling off in the late stages of 1985. Bonnet ended up finishing fifth in the points that year, but if he kept his pace up, he could have very easily been the champion despite only having one victory. His one victory came right here at North Wilkesboro in that season. Bobby Hillen Jr., you can see him creeping down pit road. Despite this being a short track, this is a track with a continuous pit road. You can see it's starting there in turn three, and it goes all the way around to the front straightaway and stretches into turn number one. You can see there it goes. There's the exit. So this is not like Darlington or Rockingham or Bristol or Martinsville, where you have two pit roads, one continuous pit road here at North Wilkesboro. Well, it's interesting to me how we have Darlington, which has uh, two pit roads, and Rockingham that has two pit roads. Both of those tracks significantly larger than North Wilkesboro and Richmond, yet North Wilkesboro and Richmond in one continuous pit road. But they also have pit boxes situated on the turns as well. So there is a little bit of a sacrifice. You can see Phil Parsons. He's trying to work through the field a little bit. And there are a lot of drivers deep in the field here that aren't exactly doing well. Tim Richmond right now is in 12th, Earnhardt 13th, Sterling Marlin 14th, Phil Parsons in 15th. You can see Ernie Irvin in 17th here, Terry Labonte in 19th, Harry Gant 21st, and Ken Schrader here in 24th. So we do have a lot of notable guys here. So far, not exactly having a good run here. So far, it's been a very clean race here at North Wilkesboro, which is pretty surprising to say the least. Not very typical of this track. Right now, the rookie of the race appears to be the number 55, Ted Musgrave, in the 28th position. 29th, we have Wally Dallenbach. In 31st, we have Bobby Hamilton. And in 37th is Stanley Smith. Here's the 20 of Rob Moroso. He looks like he was the one involved, taking a look at the damage on his car. It looks like he was the one involved in that incident on lap one, so I'm interested to see what exactly happened on lap one here. Lap one or two, one of them. Whatever happened here, remember NASCAR did not throw the yellow flag for this. Yeah. Yeah, he stayed off the track. Kept it going, all the debris off the track. They just collected it off the wall. No big deal. So no yellow flag was thrown for that. Meanwhile, the lead battle, it's still between Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd right now. Davey Allison, he's right there too. So Rusty Wallace, he started this season out with a bang. He ended up getting two straight wins. And then he had some inconsistent finishes. Didn't exactly finish well. And it's hurt him in the standings. He's dropped all the way down to the ninth position. He's been the driver to lead the most laps so far in this season. And he continues to lead laps here at North Wilkesboro. So clearly, uh, being up front is not the issue for Rusty Wallace. It's being up front at the end of the race. And that's what he really, really needs to do right now. And what he hasn't been doing 
is being up front when it matters at the end of the race. You can dominate all 90, 100 laps to a race. But if you aren't there for the final lap, you ain't getting the victory. You ain't getting the points. And that's the big thing right now is that he just hasn't been getting the points. Ricky Rudd's right there. He's just waiting for his opening to get up. You can tell that he's faster than the two, and he's really trying to find a way around Rusty Wallace. He just has not been able to do it yet. Surprisingly, caution-free so far from North Wilkesboro. Ricky Rudd's still trying to find a way around the two car. You can see Bobby Hillen Jr. He gets out of the way. Is that the opening Ricky Rudd needs? He dives down to the bottom. Can he make it stick here going down the back straightaway? Looks like he's going to do it. Ricky Rudd, we got a lead change here. Lap number 25, Ricky Rudd is your new leader. And Rusty Wallace will slip into the second position. If we take a look at fastest lap time so far, Rusty Wallace is the leader there. And Ricky Rudd is only fourth fastest. So keep that in mind. So maybe Wallace probably has a good short run car, but clearly on the longer runs, uh, Ricky Rudd is the faster car. He is starting to pull away from Rusty Wallace here, and Davy Ellison might want him by here too. Remember, Davy Ellison, he got that win at Michigan in 1987. He's been winless since. And it's a really odd thing, the fact that he's been winless since, but he has been a winless driver since winning in his rookie season, which was very impressive, to say the least. It just hasn't been there. For, it just hasn't been there for him, though. Well, right now, is this might be the best chance he's had to win a race. And, and I know we keep on saying that every single week, but this is probably the best chance he's had he's going to have to win a race. So if he's going to do it, he's they're going to have to work on the car and they're just going to have to get it better. And I'm sure they will. These guys have a lot of fight in them. And obviously Davy Allison, a lot of talent there. They just got to get it done. Ricky Rudd is just pulling away here at North Wilkesboro. Yeah, Rudd's just got the car. He's dialed in here. Very clearly, he's dialed in. We look further back here. You can see the battle for the sixth position. Bill Elliott just took that away. Mark Martin in seventh here. Jeff Bodine in eighth. Dale Earnhardt in ninth. We have Brett Bodine rounding out the top ten. And here we see the battle for 11th position. Neil Bonnet, Sterling Marlin trying to fight against one another. And then take a look at this battle. Battle back here. We got Tim Richmond, Kyle Petty, Morgan Shepard, Lakes. Well, Lakes speeds a lap down. But we have Tim Richmond, Kyle Petty, Morgan Shepard, and Phil Parsons all clustering around here. Morgan Shepard getting around Kyle Petty. Petty was able to get into the top 10, but that was about it in that 42 car. That mellow yellow machine obviously working pretty well for Kyle Petty, but maybe not quite yet. Ernie Irvin's still trying to come up through the field, and man, this is still a parking lot back here. Larry Pearson trying to get around uh, Stanley Smith there. Stanley Smith is in 39th, and you can just see other drivers here. Hutch Strickland, Terry Labonte, Chad Little, Rick Mast, 
and Jimmy Spencer all battling for position while also all trying to get around lap traffic. And this is all in the mid-20s, and this is what short track racing is all about here, folks. You don't get a break at this track. Even when you're the leader, you don't get a break at this track. And this just shows you just how intense the fighting has been so far here at North Wilkesboro. It's been a very good, clean fight so far. Lap 36, no cautions. And usually there's a caution brought out about once every five laps here. And honestly, it's a refreshing change of pace here that we don't have that. We have that at Bristol, that's for sure. But then things eventually got cleaned up. We do not have that today at North Wilkesboro. And you can see Rob Moroso actually. And now we got a car on, we got some cars on pit road. We got Morgan Shepard. We got Neil Bonnet on pit road. And now the leader is coming down on pit road, Ricky Rudd. So we got uh, pit stops coming through now. Your leader, number 17, Daryl Waltrip. And green flag pit stops. Not exactly the thing that you would expect at this track. There's Alan Kowicki dropping off. Jeff Bodine, Mark Martin, Phil Parsons, Ernie Irvin. Basically everyone else. <laughs> oh! Craig Sachs went into the wall there. I don't know if Harry Gant shoved him out of the way. I think Harry Gant's staying out here, and he should lead this lap. Yes, that's five bonus points for Harry Gant right there. He knows he's not having a good day. Five bonus points for Harry Gant. That's that. And that's called uh, veteran tenacity right there. He knows that he needed that. He needed some bonus points, and he went out there and he got them. So, very good job there by Harry Gant going out there getting them bonus points. And that's something that veterans of NASCAR do, you know, in order to turn a bad day into a, well, not as bad day. Because you get those five bonus points, you might as well be jumping two positions if you're down there in the 20s. So you're doing really well if you're, if you're getting those bonus points. Watching as everything cycles out, it looks like Ricky Rudd's going to have about a two and a half second advantage over Rusty Wallace. And about a three and a half, and about a four second advantage back to Davey Allison. In fourth position, we have uh, Alan Kowicki here. He's continuing to have great runs. And then we have Daryl Waltrip, who did not have a good pit stop, clearly. He's a lap down. And that leads us back to Bill Elliott. And now here's Neil Bonnet in the 21. He's going for the fifth position right here with this pass. And he's doing a great job, you know. This is going to be his final full-time season. And he's really racing his ass off right now in that 21 machine. He's trying his absolute best. And you can tell that he's been... He's just been racing his ass off in that 21 machine. And if he ends up continuing to do this well, you know... They're, they're going to want to try to convince him, hey, you know, we want you to stay on this 21 team. Come on. Come on, Bonnet. <laughs> you know. on You know, obviously he didn't exactly have a 1990 season. That was very good. But uh, so far, 1991 has not been terrible for Bonnet. And here he is. He's up in the top five. He's got to be very happy right now with that 21, with that 21 program and that 21 machine. Dale Earnhardt, despite struggling early on, he's crept into the seventh position. Jeff Bodine, he's an eighth. Here's Morgan Shepard. He's found his way into ninth. And how about Sterling Marlin, another driver that's really struggled. He's up in the top ten as well. 
So that means some drivers really struggled on pit road. One of them is Mark Martin. He's fallen all the way back to 13th. We've already documented that Daryl Waltrip ended up going a lap down. Uh, Kyle Petty continues to fall back slowly but surely. He's in the 16th position. See if there's anybody else that really fell off. I'm not seeing it. Gary Gant just went a lap down. There's Davey Allison putting a few people a lap down. And it looks like right now he's actually putting up lap times that are considerably faster than not just Ricky Rudd, but also faster than Rusty Wallace right now. He was four seconds behind Rudd, and now he's only three. So... Davey Allison clearly putting up the lap times right now to try to run down Ricky Rudd, and that was another two-tenths of a lap, two-tenths of a second faster than Ricky Rudd. And it's entirely possible that Rudd is just very patiently picking off lap traffic, not trying to go too far, and the caution flag is out for the first time today here on lap 50. I, it took that long for the caution flag to finally come out. So the question is, where's the caution? And there it is, Stanley Smith. Looked like he had problems trying to get onto pit road. Already not having a good day. He tried to merge back and no, he just caught the cones. Those cone shots are always brutal. Everyone's coming down pit road for four fresh tires, no doubt about that. Ricky Rudd's off pit road first. Oh, Rusty Wallace just barely beat Davey Allison off pit road. Alan Kowicki's off pit road. Bonnet. Elliot Earnhardt. Jeff Bodine. Morgan Shepard. Sterling Marlin. Now, Mickey Gibbs got turned around here. What happened there? Oh, God, Ricky Rudd got forced down pit road. That was... Man, that was just not good. Yeah, he's going to the tail end, too. Ricky Rudd, unfortunately, being forced down pit road there. And that's the thing about this the way that this pit road is it's very very difficult uh getting on pit road getting off pit road and that's one of another one of the reasons why you do see so many cautions at this track and you just saw one of the difficulties right there And pace car lights are off. Not quite sure what Rusty Wallace is doing there. But now with Ricky Rudd pretty much solidly out of the equation now. He'll be restarting 22nd. Harry Gant is on the tail end of the lead lap. 
Uh, the first car one lap down is Larry Pearson in the 41 car. The 47 and 43 are multiple laps down. So obviously Mickey Gibbs and Stanley Smith are going to be out due to an accident. You both saw their accidents. Mr. Cars got rejected by the water barrels. The green flag is back out here from North Wilkesboro. And we'll, as it always is on these short tracks, who can get to the bottom? And guess who's on the bottom? Not Alan Kowicki. <laughs> and then Alan Kowicki just got dive bombed there, and it's been not a clear path to the bottom for anyone. And finally, the leader was able to get there, but can he make it stick? Yes, he can. Davy Allison needs to get around Greg Sachs here, and it looks like he'll be able to do that here coming off of turn number four. And now here's the thing. Davy Allison just looked so fast in that second run there with the tires. I think he's got I think he's got the fastest car on the track. Hasn't been reflected in the fastest lap times, obviously, but I really think that that 28 car's got the fastest car on the track. Yeah, and there you go. He, he just put down the fastest time of the day, 113.6 miles an hour. So he, he just put down the fastest time of the day. There you go. And the caution flag has come back out. And I'm going to guess the cautions are now going to begin. And once again, it's somebody trying to get to pit road. This time it's Rob Moroso, and once again, and he, he, along with everyone else, is just going to get rejected. Oh, no, this is the second time he's been thrown into that inside wall. He just gets rejected by the tire barrier. Oh, the water barrels, rather. Interesting idea here. Davey Allison... And Bill Elliott deciding to go to Pit Road. So Davy Allison, Bill Elliott, both of them are deciding to go to Pit Road. And Davy Allison taking a bit of a long time on Pit Road. And I'm not uh, quite 100% sure why that happened, but that's what happened. And then you can see, of course, all the lapped cars are going to come down. So who does that put in the... Well, now you can see everyone else coming down pit road. So that's going to give Davey Allison the lead, wouldn't it? No, that's going to give Dale Earnhardt the lead. No, it's going to give Neil Bonnet the lead. Excuse me. Your leader is number 21, Neil Bonnet. So Bonnet now leading here at North Wilkesboro. Well, with Dale Earnhardt right behind him. And the Bodine brothers right behind them. This is going to be a really interesting top 10 once we get a look at it. And that's something that North Wilkesboro is known for. Very well for is creating very interesting looking top tens. And you can see it right there. Neil Bonnet is in the lead. Earnhardt second. Brett Bodine third. Jeff Bodine fourth. Phil Parsons fifth. Ernie Irvin sixth. Sterling Marlin seventh. Tim Richmond, 8th, Garrett Cope, ninth, and Kyle Petty rounding out the top 10. Now, everybody that just ended up pitting, Bill Elliott and Davey Allison and everyone else behind them. 
they should not have to pit for the rest of this race. But it's borderline. Very, very borderline. Everyone else has to pit. So keep that in mind. And they're going to have to pit within the next 10 laps or so. So they're not going to stay out for long here. If we go green the rest of the way, they're not going to stay out for very long here. Everyone is going to have to pit within 10 laps. And if the caution flag comes out, you can expect to see all these people up here. They'll be going down pit road. And that'll be everyone's last pit. And Sterling Marlin, I think, just decided he wanted to go down pit road. So issues for the 22 team, clearly. This car comes down and the green flag is out and we're underway. The 41 is on the tail end of the lead lap. The 21 is your leader. Man, Brett, that was your that was a perfect time to dive down to the bottom of the track. I'm gonna go into the wall here. And look at this, Ernie Irvin off the inside wall. And he can't quite save it. Three cars going to the wall there. Derek Cope involved. Kyle Petty involved. Caution flag is obviously out. Race back to the line. Earnhardt. Earnhardt. Back to the line first. A lot of guys just got on the lead lap. Yep. So, does that give the lead to the 28 car now? We'll find out. Logic would say yes, but we just got to make sure here. Shouldn't need to be any more pit stops for the rest of this race. Tim Richmond is your leader. Oh, yeah, that's right. But he's got us. He's also got to come down pit road here. Just making sure I'm not missing anything. Yes, indeed. Davey Allison is going to be your leader here. But don't be surprised if all these guys up front, like I said, it's going to be very close on whether if they can make it all the way to the end or not. So they may the all these guys may still have to pit as well. But the guys that just pitted now definitely do not have to pit. Your top 10 is as follows. Davey Ellison is in the lead. We have Rusty Wallace in second. Alan Kowicki in third. How about this one? Hutch Strickland. He's found his way into the fourth position. Sterling Marlin in fifth. I mean, excuse me, Harry Gant is in 5th, Sterling Marlin is in 31st, uh, Neil Bonnet 6th, Dale Earnhardt 7th, Morgan Shepard 8th, Jeff Bodine 9th, and Phil Parsons rounds out the top 10. So your leader is number 28, Davey Allison. And note that Alan Kowicki is right there. He might be able to pull yet another win out of his backside. That would be incredible if he were to be able to do that. But man, this is just going to be, this is going to be a slog all the way to the end. I, I we're, we're going to have an incident like every other lap here. We had those first 50 laps where the race was run pretty much clean. And now... The attrition stage is definitely coming here, and 
man, it's just, it's going to be a really rough run all the way to the end. It's a big question. Who is going to be able to survive? We currently have 29 cars on the lead lap. Really, we have 26 cars on the lead lap. Three of them are on the tail end of the lead lap. That's the 5, the 51, the 71. So Ken Schrader, Jeff Purvis, and uh, Dave Marcus. Everyone else there, everyone on the inside lane, of course, one lap down. Everyone on the outside lane behind Marcus is on the lead lap. So Davey Allison, your leader. Wallace second, Kawicki third, Strickland fourth, Gantt fifth. I don't know how Sterling Marlin ended up one lap down, but probably the same way that uh, Darrell Waltrip ended up a lap down. Green flag is out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Marlin had that issue on the restart, and that's what happened. So that's why Marlin's lap down. Fight for the bottom continues. Oh, Wallace is trying to get there. Is he going to make it three wide? He makes it three wide trying to get the lead. That's exactly how you have to play, North Wilkesboro. And he gets to the bottom. And yeah, guess who else gets to the bottom here? If Allison's able to make the cut, and he should be able to. Allison also gets to the bottom here, and he's going to make it three wide as Trickle's going to let him on by. Rusty Wallace has the lead, and now he's trying to slice his way through lap traffic. Alan Kowicki's in third. Lap traffic not exactly being his friend. You can see Wally Dolan back, and Dick Trickle really boxing him in here. He doesn't have a lot of options. Hutch Strickland right now, he's in the fourth position, and... He's pretty much in the same route. Lap traffic all around him. Not much that he can do about it. Dale Earnhardt, he's trying his best to cut through the lap traffic right now. He just got around Harry Gant. And now you can see that Neil Bonnet's going to try to get underneath him. But him, but uh, Harry Gant and Jeff Bodine, they're, they're just stuck on the outside. And they're starting to go backwards. And backwards, not a good way to go. Oh, well, you can't discount that the 28 car, and you know, we said that the 28 is the fastest car on the track. And then Rusty Wallace pulls out a 114.6, a full mile per hour faster than anybody else on the track. Come on! I mean, who is he fooling here? Well, Wallace is about to be free from lap traffic. Meanwhile, Davey Allison, he's getting very hard pressure right now from Alan Kowicki for that second position. Kowicki's going to get it here too soon as well. Kowicki is all over the back bumper of the 28, and there you go. Allison slips up. Kowicki goes underneath. And Kowicki just continues to be consistent. Just to let you know that the uh, that the points leader, Ricky Rudd, has actually put his car behind the wall. He's in the garage, and he will finish 39th. And Davey Allison is right on Kowicki's back door. He's like, nope, I want that spot back. All oh, that battle, and that's just going to lead to Rusty Wallace pulling away. Meanwhile, it looks like everyone's finally starting to catch Hutch Strickland. Bodine goes right around him. There goes Earnhardt underneath. Earnhardt goes right under around him. So Jeff Bodine just moved into the fourth. Earnhardt moves into fifth. Meanwhile, Mark Martin, he was struggling. Or he was doing well. Then he started to struggle. And now look at where he is. He just moved himself into the seventh position, and he's going to want sixth here from Hutch Strickland. Is he going to get it? Got it. He got it. 
So he takes that spot away from Strickland. Just looking further back here, trying to figure out what other battles are going on. You can see Terry Labonte, he snuck his way into the top 10 in that 94 machine. So there you go for Terry Labonte. Bill Parsons there in the one car. And now here's Daryl Waltrip. Remember, he just got back on the lead lap. He's been charging really hard trying to get into that top 10. But as of right now, it looks really looks good for Rusty Wallace to pull out a uh, win number three on the year. He's about three seconds ahead of Davey Allison and Alan Kowicki here. He's just three seconds ahead. And you can see here... Allison and Kowicki are still battling very hard for that second position. As Kowicki just went on by there. I think it's uh, pretty clear who the points leader is going to be at the end of this race. Yep. But hey, Davey Allison, it's not like he hasn't had a solid run. Uh, Jeff Bodine, Dale Earnhardt, both having solid runs as well. Mark Martin suddenly being in the sixth position and actually looking like he's one of the fastest cars on the track right now, despite never pulling a good lap the entire race. Like, he just ran the hell down both the 11 and the 3. Yeah, but he made a line, uh, he made a line adjustment there, and it just didn't work. Now it's time to see if everybody who pit there early, will they be able to make it to the end? It's right on the edge of the window. And what was the first pit they, they needed? 37, they pitted a, like around 35 laps, 35, 36, 37. So... You got to figure, they, they pitted with 38 to go. It's going to be very, very close. Those cautions likely helped them. But right now, Rusty Wallace, he's pretty much clear sailing. Alan Kowicki, he's clear sailing for second place, I'd say. We'll certainly find out. Allison's going to try to run him down. But clearly here in this final stint, uh, Rusty Wallace has just turned on the afterburners and he's been in a completely different galaxy. Like he's, he's just gone. Earnhardt getting underneath the 22 of Marlin. You know, right now, Allison, Kowicki, look at this. No. Alice, Rusty Wallace and Alan Kowicki basically turned about the same lap time, and now Rusty Wallace is running into lap traffic, but it's going to be too little too late, as everyone's about to see. Davey Allison just doesn't have the juice left in his car. Four laps to go right now here at the North Wilkesboro Speedway, and it looks like easy sailing for Rusty Wallace. This is a track he's always done well at, and he's going to come away with a victory here today unless he ends up messing up bad. You can see Jeff Bodine with the beat-up race car. He's going to try to maybe even do better than fourth here. Three laps to go. 
And that was a case of monkey. There you go. I told you it was going to be close for a couple of people. Davy Ellison down pit road. Oh, boy. Allison couldn't make it. White flag. Can Rusty Wallace make it? He's got it. He's just got to coast to the line here. He's in turn three. Looks like he's still got power in the car. He can coast from there. And Rusty Wallace will win the first Union 400. Kowicki second, Earnhardt third, Bodine fourth, and Mark Martin fifth. Man. Hutch Strickland pulling out a top 10. A very, very good run for that squad. And how about Bobby Hamilton coming away with a 15th place finish? Easily the best rookie in the field. There you go. And here you can see the standings. Rusty Wallace with his third win of the year already moves up into the fourth position in points. Davy Allison and Ricky Rudd with those mistakes. Rudd with the DNF. Allison not being able to make it to the end. He falls, they fall the seventh and eighth in the points, respectively. And Mark Martin will jump up into second as he and Kowicki are the only two people to have a top 10 in six out of the seven races so far. Oh, the next stop on the schedule is going to be at the paperclip, the Martinsville Speedway down in Martinsville, Virginia. We'll see you then.